Hey there, uh, today we're just going to dive into the hyper specific use cases of Data Studio controls. I'm not going to go through every single bit because frankly, some of them are really self-explanatory and I believe in you to get things done. Um, but we are, what we are going to do is we're going to talk about some very specific uh, use cases and just things to make your report sparkle. So let me just show you what we're going to start with. We're going to start with um, page and advanced filter overlays uh, using the checkbox thing. It's always been a pain in the butt. Um, and then uh, data and I, the date and icon filter, and then an off page filter. So that's what we're gonna hop into. Um, keep watching if you're excited. Um, and also if you would like to go download the uh, cheat sheet. Uh, so go to datastudio.vip forward slash YouTube, pick yourself up a copy of the eight steps to build your reports better every time you hit that publish button. I know, marketing. Um, so let me know. Uh, you can hit reply on any of those emails and shoot me a message as far as if you have any questions about this cheat sheet, right? Right over there, boop. All right, so let's just hop into it. And I'm gonna do this live. I'm not gonna edit out any blunders because hey, it's the real world. Um, we're just gonna go into it. And so here we go. All right, so. To start us off, what we're gonna do is we are gonna create a page um, filter. So the big thing that a lot of people miss out on is adding interactions to a report. So just so we're on the same page, if you go to add a control, you've got all of these beautiful controls right here, right? So that's what we're talking about as far as controls and in some interactions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with just a flat table which is pulling in from the Google uh, Analytics uh, demo account, right? So we got this looking pretty sweet, right? So let's just add in the page. And for the sake of this example, I'm gonna just gonna do a quick styling. So just to show you how fast you can actually style something is if you wanna go to style, just change the, the um, report to suit what you're actually wanting to do. That's not what I wanted to do, I wanted to make it deep black and then this white, right? So just so we have those pieces together. The next thing that we're gonna do is build our interactions. So um, what we're gonna imagine is that anything that starts with forward slash Google, right? So you can see here, we've got home, we've got store, we've got all these things. Um, anything that starts with Google is gonna be our marketing site. Anything that does not start with Google is going to be our help desk, right? So that we just have an idea of um, differentiating one for the other. So if we add a control here, we're going to go to an advanced filter. And what an advanced filter does is it gives you the ability to filter advancedly. No, um, an advanced filter allows you to have page and then you or any type of uh, control field, which is usually a dimension. Um, and you can do any of these specifics, right? So equals, contains, regex, et cetera. I usually just put it to contains because most people don't know regex, right? Um, what we're gonna do then is we are going to um, then style this to make it look even better. The first thing we need to do is we need to remove the uh, border shadow because I don't know why people do that. Why is it? Why is Google's default to that? I will never know. Um, there, so we have that, right? The next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna keep this at auto. Um, we're gonna change the default type to contains, and we're gonna ch change this to hidden, right? So now what we've got is just contains this. Now what we can do is bring this all the way to front. So if you don't know, um, you can click right click, and then you can go to order, and then bring to front. We're then gonna overlay this over this and we're gonna change the text to white. And then we're gonna to go to here and we're gonna make this bigger. So what we're gonna do is make this to like size 20, that's not the right one. <laughs> and then what we're gonna do is if you hold shift on this, so I'm holding shift, do, 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 you can move one pixel, right? So page contains this situation. You can make it bigger if you'd like, but it doesn't, uh, it will extend the line a little bit. So then now in view mode, what we can do is anyone can type, come in here and type in if the page contains like Google and now they're filtering the, the report to have that, right? Built into the exact table for, so for the end user, they're able to come in here, type in contains, if they know regex, they can go to it. But that way you can say, hey, I'm gonna build this within the actual 
page, right? Super, super advanced, um, not advanced, super, super easy uh, tip for you to get uh, more people using and interacting with this. The bonus tip is, so if just for, so that everyone's on the same page, is if we add another chart and we make it a scorecard, doesn't need to be a scorecard, it could be anything it wants to be. But the problem is if we go to here and we say it contains, I don't know, shop, it's gonna filter this scorecard. So how you can actually get around that is if you select all this, you can hit Command G or right click, group. Now what will happen, let's just refresh this report, is that this is only gonna filter this page. Pretty sweet, right? And, and, and if you're like, wait, JJ, um, what if you have another um, another filter on the page, right? What if you had another filter um, and you want it to be like, hey, like let's filter by this one, right? Like let's just say we had here another page filter or not a page filter, another source medium filter, which is just another type of data and you wanted to filter everything, it still works. So now we're filtering all of this, but then this individual chart now has the ability to then have a secondary filter that only affects this one chart. So if you wanted to get your quick answer, how many new users came to a specific page, you can do that super, super like eloquently and beautifully uh, there. And then if you wanted to like kind of really wow people, what you can do is just uh, come in here and add a few extra styles. So, um, yeah, that, that's how you do our first one. So right here, we are good to go. We are going to add in a quick little checkbox there. So page and advanced filter overlay. I hope that made some sense um, and you are able to quickly get that. So next thing is our checkbox. So let me just make this centered. We're gonna then group these back together. Clean things up just show you that we're doing things live so that you can have a realistic expectation of how things actually work within Data Studio. So the next thing we have is our checkbox, right? So if you come down here and you're like, hey, I wanna use a checkbox because I'm a super cool person, it's going to err for most data sources. The reason why, and the reason why is because you need a something called a Boolean. Boolean, very stupid word in my personal opinion. I'm sure technically it means something. Basically all that it means is it's gonna be a true or false. That's all that it is. So you're like, JJ, how do I get a true and false into this Boolean value? Well, you gotta create a custom formula. So what we're gonna say is on these pages, let's just make a new page. And I wanna show you this. So let's just imagine, all right, back to me. Let's just imagine that we have a help desk, right? The help desk lives on a subdomain. Let's just say it's like help.google.com, uh, or in this case, we're gonna use www.google.com, but it's a help desk, right? So most of your users that you already have are gonna be part of that. So why would you wanna include them within your uh, marketing like reports, right? So what we can actually do here is we can create a page, and I'm just gonna really quickly create a new field here ignore all the advanced things. We're gonna just concatenate the host name and the page name so that we have a page with, with the host name, um, just so that we can, again, take this to fruition here. So now what we've got is our page with the host name and we're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, now we've got everything here, but there are other, like the Google merchandise store, right? But let's just say we wanted to remove some other pages. So what you can actually do here is if you can come into this page, you can create a new field, right? And we're gonna call this exclude, uh, let's just say home paths. So what's gonna happen is if this criteria is met, so what you can say is that like, um, I like to use regex personally, regex match, um, because if it matches, then it's true. And like the outcome is a, is a, is already a Boolean. So that's the benefit. So the regex match, we're going to take the regex max match of the page. What we're going to do is just throw in some quick regex. So if the regex match, and I'm going to say it's dot star, which means anything, right? So let me just see. It means literally anything is dot star. And then we're going to say if dot star and then home and then a dollar sign, which means that it ends with the word home. Then we're gonna say check, 
or to say only home paths, just to make sure we got this and hit apply. So now if we wanted to, we could have this little true or false thing here in view mode, hit the checkbox. And now only it's going to only show, right? Only show the pages that have home at the very end, right? So now you can exclude or include pages um, that meet what you're trying to accomplish, right? So I use this all the time for help desks, right? So if the subdomain is a help desk, um, I'll usually put this up here, something like this, um, to then remove the actual border shadow. So then we have this and then we'll make it look super cute, right? We're gonna have like our blue. That's not where I wanted the blue, I want this transparent. We're gonna actually have the checkbox be blue, boom. And then we're gonna make the checkbox border color blue and we're gonna make the actual thing white. So now looking super cute, right? Um, we're able to then have this be on there and say, I wanna see only home paths, boom, only home pages. And then you're able to quickly dive into that. Um, if it was a subdomain thing, so here's just for everybody who was like, I wanted to see how to do it with a subdomain. Um, we can do here is we can say, hey, if the host name, I'm gonna put on our regex here, it starts for here. I'm just, again, we're just using our, uh, um, our demo set here. It starts with www. And then like I like to put dot star because it means anything. It just helps me like know exactly what I'm trying to do. So if it matches with that, we are gonna say it's gonna be only only www sub. And now if you click that, it should be only the pages that have www as a subdomain, which there are not. So again problem is that we don't have those things. So <laughs> um, I hope that made some sense. We now have this up and running. All right, the next thing is our date and icon filter. So what we're able to do, this is something really, really sweet that we actually were able to build out for you, is if you wanted to have a date, right? Everyone wants to have a date because we're all uh, looking for love in life. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we we want to have a date control here. Date controls, oh, that's data, sorry. Date control. Boom, so when I have a date control up here, we're just gonna default it to the last seven days because let's keep it tight. There, boom. So I got last seven days. Now what you wanna do is you're like, I wanna make this sparkle because hey, um, I am talking to JJ right now and we're gonna make things look super nice. So what you can actually do is come in here very quickly and just style this. So what we're gonna do is actually make this background white and then add a border um, of let's just say 15. Might be too much, but hey, a little bit, little bit roundy, but we're good. The biggest thing you wanna do is when you come in here to style and you wanna add in some left padding. So I like to usually add 48, but you can go up to 72. Next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to uh, datastudio.vip forward slash icons, which allows uh, anybody, right, to grab any of these icons. I'm just gonna grab this um, cute little um, calendar, um, and then we're gonna add that image to the page, right? So by URL, paste that in, hit insert, we're good to go, bada bing, bada boom. And then now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna move this over, resize it to match, Put that in the middle. I think that's the middle. That's looking mighty big. Boom. All right, ta-da. Now it has a little bit more style. You are good to go as far as having a, an icon on top of your actual um, control to give you at least a little bit more aesthetic, right? So that was the main thing that we're here trying to do. Um, and I hope that made some sense, at least to allow you to use both the data thing and then add in a little bit of style pizzazz. Um, so then the last thing here is an off page filter, which means absolutely nothing to nobody, right? Because off page filter doesn't mean anything, but let's just say, for example, you were to build a report, this report right here, only for your, like, let's just say SEO team. And you wanted this to load your SEO report. 
You've got two options to do that. Option one, you could add a filter to every single report for the criteria you're looking for. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you just go down here, add filter, and you can select the filter you'd like to. Let's just say I wanted to have like a source equal Google, right? And that could be what we got, but that's lame. We don't wanna do that. The next option you have is under your page report, you can then go to current page settings and you can actually add a data source and a filter here. I always forget this. And so then I'm like, mm, how did I do this again? So that's, that always comes problematic to me. The next option, which is gonna slow your report down a micro fraction of a second, as opposed to that a filter, in my personal experience, is to add a control that is off, off of the page with a default selection. You're like, what are you talking about? I'm about to show you. So uh, the first thing is you're gonna look for a filter. We'll just use a fixed size list for simplicity. We're gonna add in our source medium, but you could do this for anything, right? I've done this for sales teams to load a report versus a marketing team, etc. Say we're gonna do this for Google CPC, which is paid ads, right? So if it's only that, this is what the report would look like, right? We've got here, here's all the traffic coming from our source and medium of Google CPC, right? So sweet. Next is what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to load with only Google CPC. And don't mess this up because if you do, uh, it won't load. Um, so now if we go to view mode and we wanna reset this data, which is already reset, it will always load. I'm just gonna hit Command R to refresh it. It will always load with Google CPC. But now what we can do is we can move this right here. And what I usually do is I change it to a drop down and then make it look really tiny. And I usually put them in the top left or in the top center. So if you put it right here, whoa, I just put it off, off of the page, right? And I usually put it in the top left just, just to keep things like consistent. So I always know where it is. Now it's off the page and this report is just Google CPC. And so then it's easy for you if you wanted to say, for example, hey, other team, like this is what you want to look at. Now you can do that. Like, now you can just simply send this, this report as a bonus, right? So for example, if you go, if you wanted to say, send them a report that had something else, right? So say, for example, it had uh, a different source medium or something else like that. You can actually come in here and hit select what you'd like and then send them a URL and then move this back off page or even select it up there, right? Um, you can actually send them a, a URL that is exactly to that report with those specific criteria met. Um, so for example, say we're looking at this, we're looking at view, I'm just gonna copy this URL. You can see all the parameters selected. And then now if you open it up in a new page, the same parameters are already selected and they are already like up to action, right? Like we're already, back rocking and rolling. So that is how I am like able to build really dynamic reports that allow a ton of people to use them um, simply by generating new URLs and then moving this little filter off, off, the, off the screen. So I hope that made some sense. I didn't cover all of these because frankly, some of them are very, very uh, self, in, like they're very intuitive. Um, and then the slider is the only one I'll talk about some other time, but we frankly never use it. So checkbox is the main one that I was like, what in the hell is happening? So I hope that that made some sense to you um, as far as how to use these controls interactions to like better suit. Just think of how do you layer it over something, make it transparent, make it interactive because you're building a dashboard at the end of the day and not a report, right? Because a report, it could be a PDF, but a dashboard allows people to drill into, interact with, and then find their answer. So... Um, and that, that's all I've got. Again, if you wanted to grab the cheat sheet, head over to datastudio.vip forward slash YouTube. Um, and we, I'll get you that thing with my active campaign automations. Um, and we will get back to making some sexy dashboards. All right. That is all. I'll talk to you guys next time I upload a video.